Praise God. Welcome to Almost Midnight. Giving God all the honor, the praise, the glory. Hallelujah. Just thanking God for another opportunity to come on um, and join in with my uh, family, my Facebook family, my God family. Glory to God. <coughs> I'm just so thankful. Hallelujah. For God. For who He is. Amen. Oh, for the abundance of His love, His grace, His mercy. Oh, we are so blessed, beloved, to have um, God in our lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going back uh, to Ephesians. Amen. For we are in part two of who are you? Who are we? Chosen. Before the foundation of the world. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm just looking to see if anyone has um, yet joined in. And just listening to worship while I wait. While we wait. Amen. Just giving it a little time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you, praise you, and adore you. Oh, yes, Lord. Thanking you, praising you. Oh, for you are worthy, worthy. Let me see if I can get it on my phone. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I'll just be ready. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, man, Jesus. Oh, Sister Connie. My daughter, Sister Connie, is on. Amen. <clears throat> Thanking God. Hallelujah. Amen. Just praising God for the prayers. Amen. God is good. Amen. You know, we know that no weapon formed shall ever prosper. Amen. And we just give God all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> and, you know, feeling um, so much better. Amen. Jesus. Amen. All right. So I'm going to um, just cut that off, amen, and just open up in prayer. Well, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, <clears throat> just giving you all the honor, the praise, and the glory, Lord God, thanking you, Lord God, oh, that you are God, and you are God all by yourself. There is none like you, Lord God. You're the one and only true and living God, and Lord God, we are just so blessed, Lord God, so thankful, Lord God, that we know you, Lord God. Oh, Lord, that we are your heirs and joint heirs um, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord God. Just thanking you for your love, your grace, your mercy, your patience, um, your gentle, loving kindness towards us, Lord God. So, Lord, just go before um, the teaching on the continuation part two of who are you, who are we, are chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Holy Spirit, go before the teaching. Just pierce our hearts, our minds, our spirit, Lord God. So we love you, we praise you, and we adore you, and we seal it in the blood. Amen and amen. <coughs> praise God. Oh, praise God. It's so wonderful to have you on, my daughter. Um, Connie, Sister Etheridge, it's so wonderful to have you on. Always oh, such, always such a blessing to have you on, Sister Annette. I just thank God for you. Amen for you all. Praise God. Oh yes, yes. Thank you for coming on. <coughs> And I just thank God, you know, for, you know, just his healing virtue and his faithfulness and the way that God, you know, takes care of us and his just um, gentle kindness, all oh, his love and his mercy and his grace. Amen. So um, just giving God um, all the glory for that. Amen. And so I want to begin and just, um, just as, oh, praise God. Um, um, Willis Wright, Mr. Wright, um, man of God, so wonderful to have you on. Amen. And so this is part two. I mean, this is really, um, such, uh, 
a, a powerful um, word um, of God. God really has chosen us and called us um, to this. And for us to really understand it, not just to understand it, to hear it, um, to believe it, but we have to receive it. I mean, when God says that we are chosen in him before the foundation of the world, I mean, that really says something, that we are a choice of God. Amen. And on Monday, we um, actually got to verse 9. Amen. And for those of you who weren't on on Monday, I really encourage you to listen to part one or just open up the book of Ephesians. Amen. Glory to God. And read chapter one for yourself and really ask Holy Ghost to give the revelation, the understanding um, to know who you are in God. Amen. And so just praising God um, for that. Amen. And so now um, we're going to go back to verse 9. Um, and I, prob um, I think I should read um, verse 2 and 3 over again anyway um, from Ephesians. Um, and it says um, in verse 3 and 4 of Ephesians, which we should at least let that be foundational because this, these two verses are two verses that the Lord really wants us to really have it etched in our hearts and etched in our mind. Not just the words, but to understand that God is speaking directly to you, to us. He wants us to know who we are. He really wants us to know that we are chosen of God and that this is an eternal plan of God. Something that God planned and purposed before the foundation of the world. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, blessed E.D. In the past participle, he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. It's so important for us to know that this is something that God has already given and bestowed upon us as heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. But can we really receive it? Um. Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe that God is speaking directly to us? And then verse 4 says, According, according as he has what? Chosen us in him. Chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world. These words are are the word of God and God is saying beloved that you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world for such a time as this that we should be we should be what holy and without blame before him in love amen and so we're going to go back to nine but those two verses if we can get those words etched in our hearts and in our spirit so that we can um, really come to God. Praise God, Arizona. It's so wonderful to have you on. If we can really begin to come to God, understanding who we are and whose we are. Understanding that Almighty God, who created the heavens and the earth, that flung the stars in the sky, that created you, created me, every species of animal, trees, um, flowers, foliage that God the God that when you look go to the ocean and look at that vast ocean when you look at every splendid uh, sunset when you look at the beautiful sunrise this is our God that same God is the one that chose you before the foundation of the world Amen. And so many of us have been beaten down. We, Some of us have messed up our, our own lives. The enemy has caused us to um, operate in self-destruction for periods of our lives because we believed, what, that we had no value, that our life didn't serve any real purpose. But guess what? How does... 
it feel to know that God's God has always had a divine purpose for your life. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know, God is saying, I know the plans I have for you. For good and not for evil. For hope and an expected end. The enemy might mean evil, but God says what the enemy meant for evil, I will turn it around for your good. Amen. And so we're going to go back um, to um, verse 9, amen, of Ephesians chapter 1. And um, it says in verse 9, having made known, this is God speaking, he wants us to understand, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. God wants us to understand that he chooses whom to reveal the mysteries of heaven to. Amen. When we are babes in Christ or when we're out in the world. Amen. Or when we are living lukewarm lives. You know, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. Amen. When we are not serious about our walk with God. He doesn't always, he will give us some revelation. Amen. God gives us revelation revelation in his word he will holy spirit will lead us and guide us into the truth if we want the truth he says that he will what guide us into all truth that he will teach us all things and show us things to come amen but when we become one of those god chasers when we understand that we are chosen by God for such a time as this, amen, that we are not a child of God because we stumbled upon God one day or because one day we woke up and said, you know what, um, I think I want to find out about this Jesus. So I think that I want to rededicate my life to uh, Jesus Christ. No, it's that God saw us from the foundation of the world and he was able to see the moment that our hearts would be turned towards him for real. When we will want him above all things. When we will fall in love with him. Amen. And so it says in the Amplified of verse 9. He made known to us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ. Beloved, this is an exciting year. For those who are in love with God, those God chasers, those that are hungering and thirsting for God, for the true and living God, not a watered down Christ, no, not some God um, that we want to make bow to our will and our way, but the true and living God. God has a people and you are part of that people that God kept for himself for such a time as this. Some of us are older. Some of us are younger. Amen. But God needs all of us um, in his army in these latter days to be light in the darkness. To walk. It says what in verse. We're going to go back um, for a second. In to verse 4 it says according as he has chosen us what in him before the foundation of the world that we should be what holy holy and without blame before him in love amen God is calling us to holiness and righteousness amen God is calling us to that higher standard that can only be found in Christ Jesus. Amen. We can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own flesh. But the more we say, God, I don't want this to be about me. I want it to be about you. Lord, you know my weaknesses, but you promised in your word that your strength would be made perfect in my weakness. That Lord, you said that you are able in the book of Jude 
now unto him that is able to keep us from falling amen and to present us faultless before um his glory amen and so we're gonna look at verse 10 and verse 10 says um it's a continuation of verse 9. 9 says he has made known to us the mystery of his will. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Matter of fact, the whole book of Ephesians is a kind of prayer. Amen. There's a lot of prayer in Ephesians. The book of Ephesians really wants us to understand who God has called us to be and that we are chosen by Almighty God and that the power is in God not by might not by power but by my spirit said the Lord of hosts it's by the spirit of the living God we have to hunger and thirst for more of God's spirit Wednesdays is a is a 12 um, hour fast on Wednesdays Fasting for more of God because if we have God, then we have everything. And I'm not talking about um, just having God, but having the fruit of God's Spirit. God active and alive operating in us. Amen. God wants us to really know who we are. So verse 10 says, He made known to us the mystery of His will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ and the Amplified says that in the dispensation God there's a something called the fullness of time amen there's something called the fullness of God's timing amen um some of us you know we don't even fulfill our mission amen the enemy can convince us um seduce us into aborting aborting the mission and the purpose that god has for our lives but god said many are called but few are chosen god has chosen you and it says i'm gonna go to matthew 24 because god wants us to know that when you are chosen by god um no one and nothing can deceive you um it says and i'm turning over to matthew 24 um I wasn't expecting um, to go there. Um, he said, if it was all at all possible, it says in verse 24 of chapter 24 of Matthew, for there shall arise what? False Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible if it were possible they would be able to what deceive the elect the chosen of God amen but God is saying if it were possible it's not possible for God's chosen to be deceived in these latter days and God chose you because he saw before the foundation of the world that you would not allow yourself to be deceived by the enemy in the latter days. And a great part of that is love. Amen. Because the, the God, Jesus told us, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. And so the more we know God. The more we know his character, we know his nature, and we know his spirit. Amen. And when false prophets, false teachers, false apostles, um, false um, evangelists, um, anyone that is in leadership, if they are teaching false doctrine, false teachings, amen, Holy Spirit live on the inside, amen, and he will um, give us um, in our spirit, through the spirit of discernment, that what they're saying is not of God, amen, God is love. Amen. So if someone is encouraging people to hate one another, then we know that we 
um, are discerning a spirit that is not of God. God is not hatred. Amen. God is love. Amen. So if we're not in love, then we're not in God. Amen. Whenever we're in hatred, when we're um, violence, um, anything that is brutal, that is dark, that comes from the enemy, then we know that it is the fruit of the enemy and not the fruit of God. Amen. Verse 11 says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Amen. He's saying, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance. Amen. And remember when we looked at verse 3 of Ephesians, right? It says that he has blessed us with what? All spiritual blessings. Amen. So we got to remember that God before the foundation of the world chose you beloved in Christ. Amen. Chose me in Christ before the foundation of the world. And he's telling us in verse 3 that he has what? Blessed us already with all spiritual blessings. Amen. It's up to us. Amen. To receive the blessings that God has for his people. Amen. If we look at Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 shows us the blessings that um, come upon us. Overtake us. When we obey God. When we choose to follow God. Amen. And then it also shows the cursing that come as a result of disobedience, amen, and rebellion against God. And God is saying, I've already given you um, these spiritual blessings, and not only the spiritual blessings that we see in Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verse 3, but he's saying not only that, but also, you have obtained an inheritance. And he didn't say you're going to obtain it. He says you have already obtained your inheritance. Amen. And it's, just think of earthly parents. Right. Um, sometimes a parent, especially if they're very wealthy and nobody is as wealthy as our father. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. The heavens and the earth belong to God. Everything belongs to God. Amen. And so, but when we think about earthly parents, um, they will write out a will. Amen. And when they write out that will um, for their progency, for their children or for their heirs, they write out their inheritance. Amen. And some parents say as soon as they are 21 years old, they can receive their full inheritance. Some parents say, I don't think they're mature enough. They can only have part of their inheritance. And when they are 30 years old, they can have the rest of it when they are more mature. But God says that we have already obtained our inheritance. The moment... Beloved, that we stepped out of death and destruction that comes um, from walking in darkness and not accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Not just our Savior, but our Lord and Savior. And we walked into life which can only be found in Christ, then that inheritance, it came upon us. Amen. Now, all of us um, are not fully where we need to be or where we are going. Amen. The gifting could be there. How many of us um, know that God has given us a gift of prophecy? Amen. A gift of discernment of spirits. Um, a gift of teaching. A gift of... Um, of 
you know, uh, mercy. There's something called the gift of mercy. Amen. God can give us the gift, but very often we have to mature in it. So that gift is there, but it's not until we start allowing God to operate in our lives, work in our lives, until we really want God for real as he is, that we can see that gift flourish and grow more and more. And so it says, in whom? In Christ. Also, we have obtained an inheritance. It's already done. Being predestined, there we go, beloved, predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. In other words, man doesn't get to influence how God thinks. We who are human beings, people can influence our minds sometimes. The enemy can influence our minds through seduction. Amen. Or he can really um, send weapons against our mind um, to make us doubt. What God has said to us or make us doubt who we are or our own value. Amen. But God's mind. Amen. Can't be influenced by human emotions. His mind is perfect. Um, God is perfect. Amen. His thoughts are perfect. His love is perfect. His grace is perfect. His mercy is perfect. Um, perfect. His um, power is perfect. Amen. His humility is perfect. His meekness is perfect. God is perfect. Amen. Praise God, Prophet Shaniqua. And so it says that in Christ we also have obtained an inheritance when we came to him being predestinated amen God wants you to know that you were predestinated for such a time as this predestinated by God to enter into your inheritance not because he was going to force you not because he was going to make you choose him or force you to enter into your inheritance no god is like um a master chessman but greater than a master chessman like when we play checkers we sit there and look at the board the checkerboard and we try to figure out the best way for us to get um, successfully to the other side so that we can become a queen or a king amen um, and you know really win that game um, but in chess in chess you have to think well ahead of time and try to imagine what the other person is gonna do before they do it and you have to imagine if you make this move how are they gonna respond what are they gonna do if we make that move but God doesn't have to guess like people God doesn't have to sit there and think and try to figure out what the best um, method or best way it is to win this game God knows everything he is what omniscient God knows everything and he sees all things God saw every moment of your life beloved um, before you were even in your mother's womb he saw every step you would take every mistake you would make every victory you would have the very moment that you your heart was gonna turn to him for real and so God predestinated you for the call on your life so because he knew at the foundation of the world that you were going to answer that call amen he knew that he would be able to look at you and say that's my son that's my daughter and these are my remnant people that I am going to be able to use in these latter days and they're going to fulfill their purpose amen Many of you, many of us, God has kept us hidden. People don't even know our names. Amen. People don't know who we are. Amen. People underestimate who God has called you to be. Amen. 
and chosen you to be before the foundation of the world. Amen. And when we look at the word of God, amen, we look at that holy word of God, God often chooses the least likely. Amen. The one that nobody else thinks about, the one that people that are discarded by other people, rejected by other people. God chose his only begotten son. Amen. To come to earth, take on flesh and dwell among us to die on that cross for us. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And when we look at Revelation chapter 13 um, um, verse 8, it says that Jesus was slain at the foundation of the world. Amen. This is a choice of God. Out of the love of God. He didn't look at our humanity and say forget them all. I'm just going to let them all go to hell or I'm going to destroy every living human being. No, God looked from the foundation of the world and he saw your heart. He saw your spirit. He saw my heart and he said, yes, now this one, this one is going to love me for real. This one is going to want me, the true and living God for real, not the false um, religion, not just um going to church to enjoy themselves, but to hear a word from the Lord, to grow closer to the Lord, to enter into true intimacy with God, to experience. You want to experience God for yourself. You want to encounter God for yourself. Ephesians 1 is trying to say, look, you are my chosen vessel. I chose you. Stop thinking that you are not worthy. Not worthy to have experiences with me. To encounter me. I chose you. You are my chosen people. Amen. And it says predestinated according to what? God's purpose. God's purpose. Who works all things after his own will. After the counsel of his own will. In other words, um, God doesn't have to consult with anybody else God doesn't need to go to a human being and say what do you think about this what do you think about that should I do this should I not do that because he's God with perfect wisdom perfect knowledge perfect understanding and perfect love everything that God does his love is infused into it because God is love there's nothing that God can do without the love even if we can't comprehend fully the love of God and why that is love amen when we're being tested and tried in the wilderness it's out of God's love it's not out of God's punishment it's not to make us feel bad it's not so that we can struggle God is trying to get us to a place of perfect peace and perfect joy Amen. Perfect love. And then um, verse 11 says, verse 12 says that we should be the praise, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Amen. That is very um, strategically um, worded. That you, beloved, should be the praise of his glory. Amen. Um, because God says in Isaiah 43 verse 7. Even so, everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made. Beloved, you were created for God's glory. I was created for God's glory. Amen. And then it goes on to say in the New Testament, in Colossians um, chapter 1, um, verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory. God wants 
to make known to you, beloved, to me, the riches of his glory. Amen. In other words, God want to be glorified through you. And this is what it says, the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. This is the mystery. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. We wonder, amen, why God is not getting the glory in the church that much anymore. Amen. Because far too many of us in the church are living like the world. Just like the world. Living very fleshly lives. I'm not talking about imperfection. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a choice. Far too many of us in the church from the pulpit to the door. In the pulpit, in the pew, are choosing to live a life just like the world. Amen? And then come to church on Sunday, shout a little bit. Amen? Um, rejoice a little bit. Um, praise God. Amen? Um, worship God for a couple hours and then go right back. Amen to living just like the world, thinking just like the world, living just like the world, speaking just like the world, acting just like the world. How is God going to get glory if we are acting just like the world? It is Christ in us that is the hope of God getting glory. In other words, that Christ, his spirit, his character, his nature would be living on the inside of us. That we would be his reflection, his ambassadors. That's why Holy Spirit came. Amen. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. Um, because I'm going to send you another comforter. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, he lives on the inside. Amen. Um, 1 Corinthians 6 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That you were bought with a price and that your life is not your own and that you are supposed to glorify God in your bodies. We're not supposed to um, dishonor God um, in the way we live. We're not supposed to be a poor reflection of Christ. We're not supposed to walk through the world and the world is scratching their heads and saying, I just don't understand. They keep saying they're Christians, but I don't see any difference they act just like everybody else they're nasty amen they're cantankerous they're argumentative they um um backbiting stab people in the back lie on people cheat people all of those things the world is looking god wants the world to see his son in us Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in me is the hope of glory. We can't do this, beloved, in our flesh. Ephesians 1 is God wants you to know that all of these spiritual blessings he has already given you. He said he has blessed you, blessed me with all, all spiritual blessings. And one of those is to walk in humility, to walk in the love of Christ, to walk in the joy of the Lord, to walk in gentleness and meekness and kindness. Amen. To walk in with a forgiving spirit. Amen. And we cannot do that on our own. We need the spirit of the living God active on the inside, working things out. That's why we're fasting on Wednesdays, a 12-hour fast. Amen from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., whatever those hours are, that's for you to fast and ask for more of God. Ask for more of Holy Spirit. He promised us how much in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, how much more
more will our Father give us the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. It's, that's a promise. The more we ask for Holy Spirit, the more we seek God, the more we ask for more of God, He encourages us. Seek ye first, first, first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. So He wants us to know that it's Christ in us that is the hope of glory. So verse 12 says that we should be the praise of his glory. In other words, that God would be glorified um, through us and that um, by the way we walk. It would be a praise unto God and glorifying unto God who first trusted in Christ. Amen. The Amplified says, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, who first put our confidence in him as our Lord and Savior, would exist to the praise of his glory. Amen. God wants to be glorified. He gets glorified not only by the love that we walk in, the um, character, nature, and spirit of Christ, but the miracle signs and wonders, the greater works, our testimonies that glorify him. Amen. Um, it says in verse 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of a promise. Beloved, you are sealed. I am sealed. Beloved, we are chosen by God. Chosen before the foundation of the world. Predestinated. Amen. To answer the call on our lives. Because God could see that we were going to answer when we were going to answer. Amen. And that we were going to answer with all our heart, mind, soul, spirit, and might and strength. Amen. And it says, so in him... In Christ, we heard the word of truth. Jesus is the truth. Amen. He is the only truth. The way, the truth, and the light. The good news of your salvation. And as a result of believing in him, you were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by God. Amen. God's seal is in us. And that is Holy Spirit who has come into our lives. Who lives and dwells on the inside. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, um, Do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? And that I will what? Um, um, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And then he encourages us, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord of hosts. And I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters. God is calling us to separate ourselves from living a life, a worldly life. Amen. I'm not talking about never seeing a movie but make sure that if you're looking at that movie and Jesus was sitting in the seat next to you in the movie theater that is something you wouldn't be ashamed to watch in front of him amen um, we have to remember that um, he tells us in Revelation chapter 3, he invites us to let him come in. He says, lo, I stand at the door and knock, that if any man hear my voice, any man or woman hear my voice, when he says man, he's talking about mankind, male and female, if any man hear my voice, I will come and open up the door, I will come in unto him and sup with him and him with me. He wants an even closer relationship than we have already. Amen. He wants us to know him up close and personal. Amen. We have to remember that wherever we go, God is on the inside of us, beloved. Amen. So if we're listening to music, is it music that if Jesus was sitting on the couch next to us or in the car with us, is it music that we would be too ashamed to turn on because Jesus is sitting right there well beloved guess what 
He's already right there. Amen. And then he says that he has chosen us what? To sit with him in heavenly places. We are supposed to be operating with him in heavenly places. Dwelling in heavenly places. He exhorts us that our conversation will be um, in the heavens. Amen. Not um, just gossiping and putting people down and tearing people down. And you know saying vile things. No. And it says um, in verse uh, 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. Unto the praise of God. He's saying that. Salvation is part of our inheritance. Amen. That we were chosen before the foundation of the world. Because God knew that one day we were going to accept. The salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that it is earnest of our inheritance. Until that re moment of redemption. Um, of the purchase and he, it calls us the purchase possession in other words beloved you are possessed by God I am possessed by God and we were bought with a price we were bought by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on that cross unto the praise of his glory it says wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints. Amen. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. I do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. Amen. So he's talking about us because we have faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And not only do we have faith, but that we love we have love for all of God's people. Amen. And he says that he always gives thanks. And he was talking about everyone who would come to faith. Amen. And this is a prayer, beloved, that all of us should really take a look at. And it starts in verse 17. Amen. And I want you to make it personal. Amen. I'm going to be reading it. And... It's going to be a little different because I'm making it personal. But this is the prayer of Ephesians 1. Because God wants us to really accept and receive who we really are. And understand that there are gifts in the spirit that we haven't even opened up yet. That there are blessings, spiritual blessings that he has already bestowed upon us that we are not even receiving. Amen. And so the prayer is that the God, starting at verse 17. That the God, and I'm going to try to make it personal. And when you read it, you try to make it personal. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that God may grant me, grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation. May God grant you, may God grant me a spirit of wisdom and of revelation um, that gives us the knowledge of him. So that we would have knowledge of God. This is a prayer. This is a prayer. He says, I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of glory. God is the Father of glory. Amen. When we look at that Old Testament. Whatever we want to look at. We can. Or the New Testament. We see God being glorified. Through the manifestation of his power. Whether it's the parting of the Red Sea. Whether it's the 
fire um, that led them by night, the pillar of fire, amen, that led them by night, whether it was um, when he brought forth water out of a rock, Amen. Whether it was raising people from the dead, whether it was healing the blind, get, making the lame to walk, all of these were for the glory of God. Amen. And it says um, that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, the Father of glory. In other words, I mean, he gives... Um, uh, inheritance of glory and if you remember in uh, John chapter 17 Jesus prayed that the glory that he had that the father would bestow it upon us let me tell you the father wants his glory um, to be manifested in our lives for his glory so that the world can look at you the world can look at me and the world can say there must be a God look at that miracle look at that sign look at that wonder Look at them going through challenges, adversity, um, suffering, and look, they still are rejoicing. They still show the love of God. They still um, show that they have peace that surpass all understanding. It says, and the rest of the prayer is that, and Lord, Father God, I pray that you would give to your people to your chosen give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Lord please give the eyes of your understanding so that we can be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of our calling and what the is the riches of the glory of his inheritance of Jesus's inheritance in the saints amen we're gonna have to make this prayer personal that God will open up our understanding so that we can be enlightened. That we may know what is the hope of the call that's in Christ Jesus. Not man calling us. Not me calling out myself. Not you calling yourself. But the call that is in Christ. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the people of God. In the saints. And it says and to pray that your eyes that my uh, that the eyes of our heart the very center of our being may be enlightened amen and flooded by the light of the holy spirit so that we will know and cherish the hope um to which Christ has called us the riches of his glory and inheritance and Lord we pray that um, what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe according to the working of your mighty power now look at that it says in verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of God's power towards us who believe do you believe beloved do you believe it when God says that you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world for his glory? Do you believe that God wants to get glory out of your life? Do you believe that it's not by your strength but the strength of almighty God? Not by your power but by the power of almighty God. Not your holiness but the holiness of God. Not your righteousness which is as filthy rags but the righteousness of God. Amen. That God dwells in your temple. Holy Ghost is God. Amen. Holy Ghost is not some whispery, um, floating ghost-like thing. No, Holy Spirit is God. God the Father, God the Son, God Holy Spirit. And He lives on the inside of you. Amen. And I remember telling you in 2004, He would ask me and over and over and over again, Hiya, how big is your God? How big is your God? 
And I was too afraid to answer. Then one day I said, Lord, you know. And he said, I'm as big as you will let me be. Amen. He said that he has already given us what? Bestowed upon us all spiritual blessings or blessed us. We're already blessed, he said. I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings. But if we're not walking in those spiritual blessings, it's because um, we're on this journey of being refined and cleansed and purged. We're um, opening up our hearts, our minds, our spirit to believe who God says we are. Amen. To receive those spiritual blessings. Amen. And it says, verse 20, um, by that power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Amen. Look at 19. It says this is God's what? Power towards us who believe. What? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? That you got to believe it, beloved. You have to receive that what? The exceeding greatness of the power of God towards you because you believe. Who according to the working of his mighty power which he manifested and wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and set him um, at the right hand in heavenly places. God is saying this is what he has given you. That when he raised Jesus from the dead. He raised you from the dead of sin. Amen. He also raised you from a life that was leading to hell and damnation. Amen. And, and that's death. Amen. Um, separation from God. Absence from God without the hope of eternal life. He's saying that the same way he resurrected his son from death, he resurrected you, is saying um, by his mighty power. Because he's saying the power towards you who believe. Um, that he written the same way he raised them from the dead. And one day, um, these earthly bodies um, when he returns those earthly bodies are going to unite with our spirit bodies that are in heaven amen he's going to raise those earthly bodies I don't care if people um, were cremated I don't care if they were lost at sea I don't care if they were in some kind of suicide bombers explosion amen God, Almighty God created you and he's going to reunite that body that is deceased in the earth. He, because we know it turns to ashes, but he's saying that he's going to raise up that body. And he says the same way that Jesus um, sits next to him on the right hand in heavenly places. He said what? Far above, beloved, you got to know this. Amen. Jesus won the victory for you. Amen. He battled Satan for you. He took the keys of hell and um, death and the grave for you. It says that in Christ, what? You are far above. In Christ. You are far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Because this is Christ. Christ is above all principality. Christ is above all power. Christ is above all might and dominion. Christ's name is the name that is above all names. The name that is, there's no other name under heaven by which men can be saved. Him, Jesus, is above every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. He's far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Amen. And that he has put all things, Father God has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, to the church. Amen. 
um, which is his body. We are the body of Christ. And it says the fullness of him that filleth all in all, which is his body. Amen. So God wants us to know that Jesus, amen, he is above all things. Amen. And that he operates in full power and authority over every principality, every power, all might and dominion, above every name. I don't care if it's the king of England. I don't care if it's um, the king of Wales. I don't care who the king is. I don't care what their title. His name is above every name. Amen. And that we reign in heavenly places with him. He has called us to walk in heavenly places. Amen. And so we are going to be on Friday looking at these spiritual blessings. Because he has blessed us, it says in verse uh, 4, I believe, of Ephesians 1, with all spiritual blessings. Amen. Bless us with all spiritual blessings. What are those spiritual blessings? Do we understand who we are and whose we are? Do we understand that the God we serve have all power in his hand? Do we understand that Jesus came here and died for us and did battle with the enemy? And that um, God put all things, all things under his feet and gave Jesus to be head over all things to the church. Jesus is our head. Amen. He is over us. Amen. And when we live in him, dwell in him, we allow him to what? Reign in us. Christ in us is what? The hope of glory. Um. And I'm going to end with one more scripture. Um, um, it's that we are told that we can walk with him in heavenly places. Right? In heavenly places. So I want to get that scripture for you. Um, um It's chapter 2 of Ephesians, okay, because we were in um, Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to still be looking at Ephesians because there's so much power in the book of Ephesians, amen, and so we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, I think it's verse 6, um, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, um, I'm going to start at verse 5 because it's saying that when Jesus died, God through his power raised him up. But now he's talking about us starting at verse 5 of Ephesians 2. Even when we were dead in sins. Amen. Isn't that what God, Holy Spirit just had me say a few minutes ago? Even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ. In other words, before we were outside, amen, of God. We were living separate and apart from God. But we were dead in our sins. But he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Beloved, some things we're not going to understand until we get to that other side. But he is telling us that we he has already raised us up together that's verse 6. And made us 
sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So beloved, when you look at chapter 1 and look at the fact that God chose you in him before the foundation of the world, that he already said that you are blessed, that he has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Part of those spiritual blessings is that, what does it say in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6? That he has raised us, you and me, up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's an that's already where we sit. Now, are we experiencing it? If we're not experiencing um, Christ. In heavenly places in the spirit realm in higher realms of the spirit is because we haven't gotten there yet and part of the reason is because for so long we thought we were unworthy or no one told us or taught us this part of the word of God that in Christ we're already seated in heavenly places with Christ it's a matter of our experiencing it amen we have to walk into it amen we have to receive it we have to start believing God at his word not what our limited minds think about ourselves, not what the enemy thinks about us, not what family thinks about us, not about what friends or even people who are rivals or antagonists think about us, but what who God says we are. We want to walk there. We want to experience God in those heavenly places. Amen. So let us pray out on Friday. Um, we will be looking at um, those blessings that we are blessed with. Amen. He said we are already blessed with all spiritual blessings. Amen. So Friday we're going to be looking at them. Praise God, um, son, chief apostle King Larry. Wonderful to have you on. So let us pray out. Well, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, just giving you all the honor and the praise and the glory. Lord God, I'm just um, going to pray out um, the prayer of Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Um. Father God, the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, please uh, grant um, unto us, give unto us, give unto them, give to me, Lord God, um, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, Lord, the God um, of our Father, um, open up the eyes of our understanding so that we can be enlightened in you, in the word, Lord God, that in who you are and who we are in you, that you um, may, that we can know what is the hope of um, the calling um, of Christ Jesus. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Lord, help us to understand our inheritance in Christ. Help us to understand, Lord God, Father God, the full understanding of why Jesus came for us, Lord God. Why you, Lord God, allowed your beloved son your only begotten son to die for us Lord God why we are so important to you Lord God that you Lord God would allow your only beloved son um, begotten son to die in our place to pay the penalty for our sins Lord God pay the price for us the ransom for us Lord God to reconcile us back unto you Lord God praying um that the eyes of our heart, the very core of who we are, would be enlightened and flooded with the light of Christ um, by the power of Holy Spirit so that we can know and cherish and hope um, what is that divine expectation to which um, he has called um, us. And what is the exceeding greatness, Lord God, of your power towards us 
who believe according to the work of your mighty power, Lord God, um, which was wrought in Christ when you raised them from the dead. Lord God, you said to us, Lord God, that, Father, um, that we um, would know um, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And that Lord God according to your will. Your divine purpose. Your perfect knowledge, wisdom and understanding Lord God. That you chose them. Chose me. Chose us in you. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. Walk in your holiness and righteousness and without blame before him, Lord God. So, Lord, I thank you for your people, Lord God. I thank you for this year. I thank you, Lord God, for all you have purposed to do this year. To um, allow us to enter into those heavenly places with you. To encounter you in heavenly places. Experience you in heavenly places, Lord God. All oh, to know, Lord God, you for ourselves. So, Lord, I I just thank you, praise you, and adore you, Lord God. And I call forth Ephesians 1, Lord God, that it would be written in their spirit, Holy Ghost, Lord, Holy Spirit. That, Lord, it would be engrafted in our hearts and our minds. That um, Ephesians 1 would become active and alive in your chosen people, Lord God. That we would know you as you are. That, Lord God, that we, Lord God, would not run from your word but run to your word and hold on to your word believe it and receive it and allow your word to take shape and form in us Lord God and be active and alive for your spirit words are spirit and their life and we seal it in the blood we say and call it forth and say it it is so because it is your word and your words don't return to you empty or void but accomplish that which you please in Jesus name amen and amen well praise God everyone um it's so wonderful to have you on tonight Amen. I am just so excited for you. Um, you know, if anyone um, did not quite um, understand something about Ephesians 1, just send me a message. Send um, on Messenger. Um, ask a question in the comment section because this is supposed to be life changing. Amen. The beauty of holiness. Praise God. Um, and you know, this is supposed to be life changing. When we know when we know and we know and we know that we were chosen by Almighty God before the foundation of the world for such a time as this, that God's choice are perfect, that God is perfect. Amen. His way is perfect. His choices are perfect. You are perfect choice of God. Amen. So um, hold on to this word. Don't let it um, slip um, from your heart. Amen. Um, so have a good night, um, praising God for you, giving God um, all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And once again, thank you for coming on tonight. Love you. Remember, it's almost midnight, and the bride must make herself ready. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, Jesus. Oh.